the next unit of computing. These always take me longer to get back to than I'd like. I've got this rad little Ghost Canyon Nook. It really is a rad little small form factor PC. Now the Nook line from Intel is all about building more power into tiny little shells. Ghost Canyon is a lot bigger than most of these other Nooks we've seen before, but it also allows you to install a dedicated mini GPU. So you end up with high-end computing power in a box smaller than what I would normally get when I would buy a pair of boots. I did a short build video putting this box together, my experiences, and we've been running it behind our TV for a little while now. The first delay in getting back to this coverage I thought I nuked it. See, I was working a GTX 1070 I inherited from another project, and this kind of went sizzle pop, and I thought it took out the whole nook. But thankfully, I only killed the GPU. I'll spare you the gory details, but that one was on me. Replacing that 1070 with a GTX 1660 Super, and we're in much better shape. The Nook has been up and running like a champ. Absolutely crushing 1080p gaming and handling 4K pretty well on some less demanding indie titles. This really is overkill as a gaming box, using it how we've been using it. I mean, Tetris Effect in VR really isn't that demanding. Running this a bit harder for situations like content creation and video rendering, we're in solid territory. The exciting thing here is the validation of mobile parts as proper computing solutions. My Ghost Canyon came with a top-of-the-line Core i9-9980HK, and there is a version available with the Xeon. But that 9980HK, recently replaced by the 10980HK, is the tier of processor you'll find in a high-end creator or gaming laptop. Those systems, mostly starting north of $2,000, and spec'd out, they can get really pricey. Here, it's built into a box with more fans and more airflow. The Nook runs quieter and cooler than what we can do on a laptop. In this configuration, we see the 9980 close in on the performance of a higher-end desktop part, falling only slightly behind a 9900K or a 10700K. My build here for the Ghost Canyon, considering the small form factor tax, is a solid bang for your buck. And you don't really need to build it. The Nook is a modular computer on PCI slot solution. There's one big fat card with everything built in, and the case has room for a GPU. You pop in notebook style RAM and SSD, you close up the case, and you push power. Mini ITX builds kind of weird me out, but building a Nook was as close to Lego plug and play as you can get. Back to performance, I mentioned video editing, and this is an absolute monster in a tiny little shell. I don't have charts of years of individual PC components, but it was really fun seeing how far we've improved from even a couple years back. And my old Razer is starting to show its age. A little while back, this mobile Core i7 with a mobile GTX 970 was about a $2,000 laptop. Just comparing CPU to CPU in DaVinci Resolve to render out a one minute 4K youtube -y kind of video. It's the same setup I used to test smartphones. The Razer took two and a half times longer to render the video. We shouldn't be surprised to see the Nook deliver more than twice as fast. It's newer and it's in a more desktop-like cooling environment, but for those who space out their updates a little bit longer, that kind of performance looks really good. This is a really nice showcase for Intel's mobile Core i9. And not really germane to a conversation about mobility, but I had to give it a run switching DaVinci over to GPU rendering on a solid mid-range card like the 1660 Super cuts that render time down to 25 seconds. That's really nice. All well and good. We love seeing better performance on newer computing platforms, but I do have a few concerns. One of the joys of building a PC is the ability to upgrade over time. Recycle a case, swap in new components. I ran a Franken build for over a decade out of one old NZXT case. The promise of Ghost Canyon is that when new processors come out, we should get new Nook cards to upgrade the box. But this is the first iteration of that specific concept, and even though Intel 10th Gen is out, we haven't seen an upgrade path for this product line yet. I'd also expect upgrades to be a little pricey. The power supply and cooling definitely contribute to the costs, but the entire computing solution is built into one slot. So I would imagine the price of upgrading a Nook would likely be higher than replacing both the CPU and motherboard of a mini ITX build. Lastly, I have some small concerns over build longevity. This box is remarkably tiny. 
and Intel deserves a ton of credit for some incredible engineering. There's something exciting about how we might stray from the standard PC building form factors and parts. But I kind of like how some things are standardized these days. I started building computers in the darkest days of enthusiast DIY, where you could always count on some piece of your case slicing your hand open. Today, PC building on full-sized ATX cases is wonderful for things like big meaty thumb screws and toolless components. Cracking open the nook makes me a little nervous for how many parts connect with these supremely tiny screws. Now, the threads that lock your cards down look like they came out of a watch. They're bitty. I popped this case open five or six times now for different projects to repair my GPU. And while I've tried to be careful, I have stripped one of the screws that mounts this top fan bracket. It no longer sits in flush. There's little expectation that a non-tech reviewer Nook owner would be opening and closing this box as often as I have in the same period of time, but it's a part of the Nook promise we can't quite verify yet. Will it get those upgrades? And how careful do you need to be with the frame while you're servicing those upgrades? Time will tell. I came into this with pretty high expectations. We ran the Hades Canyon nook surprisingly hard at Newegg. A Ghost Canyon has more than lived up to those expectations, and without paying too severe a price penalty for the novel space-saving engineering on an Intel build. Looking pre-built, this competes really well against other small powerhouse PCs like Corsair's one series of mini towers. If you can build your own, you can always save some cash especially using a larger mini ITX case. As it stands, the Nook is still an incredibly fun lineup to play with. The FNKs are super handy, fitting a full PC in a box smaller than what we used to use for basic video streaming. And even stepping up to Ghost Canyon, it's exciting to see workstation grade performance in something that could be carted around in a backpack. Like I said, it's silly overkill for a behind the TV PC, but I kind of like having a stupid powerful box. And I'd like to hear from you. If you were building small form factor competitor, what would you throw in the box? Drop a parts list down below. Let's chat. I'll of course leave a link down below for more info on Ghost Canyon, where you can look up Nook parts and pricing. As always, thanks so much for watching for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. I hope you'll check out the links and merch below, which help me not pack every video with baked in ads and sponsorships. There's a support page on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by from my Patreon. Now, those are super cool tech pals, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.